there, I'm Mill Spec Monkey, and today I wanted to try and give a tutorial on malice clips. There's all different kinds of ways to attach tactical pouches these days, but I found mouse clips to be a pretty good balance of security and durability. They've got a good track record because they've been around for quite some time. And hopefully within this process you'll learn the general idea on how to attach tactical pouches to other tactical bags because they can have a good similarities of overlap. Anyway, uh, join me for the ride and hopefully I give you some helpful info. To get things started, we should probably go over a little history. Mouse clips are made to go on most modern modular gear. As a little blast from the past though, Alice was one of the first attempts at it from the Vietnam days. They had a little bit different way of going about it, I'll, I'll show that more later. But one of the popular ones that had lasting power even today was the PAL system. And one of the first systems to make that popular was the Molly gear system. And it's a little confusing, sometimes people use them willy-nilly, but basically PALS was the attachment system on the Molly gear package. So it's kind of a, a quick show of back in the day, they, they mostly used spaced out webbing with the, the snaps as in the gear that attaches to it. And then as a platform example, you have the webbing with one inch dividers. And as a quick rundown of the specifications, it'll be one inch webbing with 1.5 inch divisions. And then the spacing between them is one inch again. While on the note to history, might as well go down the different generations of mouse clips. Starting with the first one, it was basically the idea to have a, a, a full polymer clip with no metal to corrode or get all bent and busted. And a nice Spartan approach, did what it intended. And they cleaned it up a little bit with Gen 2, where they made the release clip a little bit easier to function. Got into some screw holes, which helped a lot for getting creative ideas on adding it to hard gear and just finding cool new solutions. And then our latest gen, they really maximized slimming it down while still keeping that nice durability. So you can see here, it was kind of interesting how they slimmed it up where looks like may have even increased the thickness on the second gen and then really slimmed everything down for the latest gen. So let's get into the good stuff to show some actual examples of when you can use mouse clips. You want to have a PALS platform like the vest I showed you earlier or a backpack. And then these would be some pouches where they have the PALS webbing on the back. Back in the day they used to use a little bit less, but at least on when I make them I like to do a full set where it adds a little bit more adjustability when you mount. Two main sizes, you got short and long, which basically equates to 3 inch and 5 inch. When getting ready to mount, typically you want to have the mouse clips in this position. So it's the back of the pouch and you'll have the clippy end coming out here and visibly being able to see the tab info and get to it. It will end up like this, but it's a good, good way to visually check it out. So if you have to start from scratch, you're just slipping them in and having them stick out like that when you're getting ready to mount. And then, say you just want to make sure things fit, because sometimes you have a little fudge room, depending on the design of the gear. So let's say we just want to put it here, and so you can kind of align, see where the top is, and just test it real quick. And let's see if that's where you want it, and you're like, okay, I'm going to proceed. So what we're looking for is just a simple weave. So we're going back and forth. This is a good start. And then you'll weave it with the next one. So it'll look like this. You can start to see the weave. You would do that for the next one. Like so. And then you're repeating the process. So now we're going to stick them under the platform webbing. Under. Now we just have the connection points, so we go straight to there. Don't have to worry about weaving again. Stick them in there and try and bend it opposite way. You'll hear a feel, a little lock. Same over here. Feel it till it locks. And so now you have a nice weave going that really tightens everything down. One can just directly 
without doing the weave, but it'll be a floppy. The day may come where you need that, but most people like a nice tight fit. When it comes time to release a mouse clip, you've got a few options. Best case scenario is to have a flat tip screwdriver type tool, and that'll allow you to get under that release tab, and then it'll give some movement to the main strap. You might have long enough fingernails to get under there, or you could even use a knife, but then you, you want to be careful because then you can start cutting up stuff. So something that isn't going to thrash the mouse clip itself is preferred, but uh, basically any tool that'll fit will make it happen. Another approach, say you just have just a non-perfect tool, you can stab from the bottom. However, you want to make sure and have alignment, like if it's too far, then I'm just going to stab into the actual clip. You want to have alignment, so I'm passing through the hole and then moving the release tab. So then you can start to get movement on the clip and presto, an opening. As you may have noticed on the short mouse clips, they actually have two connection zones. And the story on that is where Tactical Taylor thought, hey, you might as well get some Alice compatibility, where the sizing just didn't quite the same as PALS. You can get on the first clip loose connection, but you want it nice and tight because there's no weave on the Alice system. It'll let you get to that second click, and if you know that's the only thing you're going to use, you can just cut it off, and it'll be perfect for that. And it's also a nice way, so you're just attaching belt kit to get to those different sizing options. Also another showing the use of the holes. You can see it bolted and screwed on to hardware kit and kydex to get nice and creative there. As a review and to show another modern example, the PAL system is also similar to the new stuff you start to see in laser cut. And the idea is the same on the spacing where you've got these 1.5 inch slots, but it's like having a full set of webbing, like you see the style I do on the items. It allows that little bit more adjustability rather than having just one on, one off down the chain for webbing. So it's just the same concept. When you, you line up, you're like, I want it about there. Start sneaking them in. And you're just treating it just like it was the webbing. So now we're going to start to like, how can I weave this? All right, so we go here, like so, repeat, other side, and then you just go the next one down that makes sense. So it's like this slot, like so, so you can see it, repeat. Do, do, do. And then because we're at the end, it'll just be time to click it in. Try and feel in here for that click. Make sure you got a good connection. Check it out nice and flat. Beat up on it. So there you go. Some mouse clip basics, which should also be some PALS basics for you. Hopefully this has been helpful and thanks for watching.